Well, the US Secretary of State has said that if the latest peace plan for Gaza fails, it'll be down to the leader of Hamas in Gaza. Antony Blinken, who's on a visit to the Middle East, said that the proposal's fate was in the hands of one guy hiding 10 stories underground, a reference to Yahya Sinwar. There's been no formal response from Hamas. The peace plan was outlined 11 days ago by President Biden. And on Monday night, as you heard earlier, the UN Security Council passed a resolution backing that proposal. I believe strongly, this is now my eighth trip to the region since October 7th, that the overwhelming majority of people, whether they're in Israel, uh, the West Bank, in Gaza, throughout the region, around the world, actually want and believe in a future where Israelis and Palestinians alike can live in peace, in security. My message to governments throughout the region to people throughout the region is, if you want a ceasefire, press Hamas to say yes. If you want to alleviate the terrible suffering of Palestinians in Gaza, press Hamas to say yes. If you want to get all the hostages home, press Hamas to say yes. If you want to put Israelis and Palestinians alike on the path to more durable peace and security, press Hamas to say yes. If you want to prevent this conflict from spreading, press Hamas to say yes. The U.S. Secretary of State there, Antony Blinken. Well, the Israeli military says four soldiers have been killed in Rafah in southern Gaza. According to a statement, they died when a building rigged with explosives collapsed. Two of the soldiers were aged 19. Several others were seriously wounded. Since the war began last October, about 300 Israeli soldiers have died. According to the Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza, more than 37,000 Palestinians have been killed. Well, for more on these stories, I'm joined now on the line from Tel Aviv by Arise special correspondent Carl Bostic. Uh, good to see you, Carl. Uh, let's begin um, with that story uh, about the American resolution that was passed by the UN Security Council. Um, what's been the reaction from within Israel? Well, uh, yes, good evening, Charles. I mean, to be, uh, to be truthful, um, this is like moving things a step forward, tr closer towards a ceasefire. It's one of the few, if not first times, that you've got a resolution uh, for a ceasefire proposed since uh, the war started in uh, October that's been passed. And that's because the U.S. did not exercise its veto, but more importantly, because it was uh, the U.S.'s own resolution. Uh, and what's really, really kind of, you know, difficult to take in, Charles, is that there's so much ambiguity in this. And ambiguity, I'm saying, you've got Secretary of State Blinken from the U.S. here in Israel. Uh, he was in Egypt earlier today. Uh, he's going to Qatar, and then he's going to Jordan. And yet, when you say that they have not formally accepted, what that means is this, and that's why you have this ambiguity. The Israeli ambassador to the UN, he's not you know, formally accepted it. The Israeli government has not formally accepted it. And yet, Secretary of State Blinken um, has said that he's met with Prime Minister Netanyahu, who's given explicit assurances that um, they will support this deal, in part because they have no choice, because the US, its main you know, uh, supporter, has uh, proposed this resolution. Um, so really, it's a nitty-gritty situation, Charles, and the, the international pressure is really on Hamas, because what also changes, uh, Charles, is this. Even the Palestinians, the Palestinian Authority and officials are in support of the resolution, because Charles, at the very least, at the very minimum, what this would do is this. It would stop the fighting, maybe even temporarily, but more importantly, it would allow for much-needed humanitarian aid to go into Gaza at levels not seen since before the war. So at the very least, you'd have an incredible flow of aid going into Gaza, and that's why the U.S. is saying, you know, what's more important, you know, for Hamas or the Palestinians, to protect the interests of its leader, Yahweh Sinwar, or to, to protect, um, you know, uh, the interests of this Palestinian people and to improve um, their living situation? So what's the sticking point for Hamas with this um, proposed deal? 
Uh, Charles, those sticking points have never changed since day one. It's very, very basic, Charles. Um, uh, even though this cost <clears throat> for a six-week phase that could be extended to negotiate for a, a longer phase one for a permanent ceasefire, Hamas wants a permanent end to the war. And uh, Israel, that's why it's ambiguous. Israel is not prepared to agree to that in advance. They, will, they want to see hostages released. They want to see they can negotiate in good faith for a second phase with more final hostages being released. That would be the soldiers, of course, and then there'd be uh, a ceasefire. But uh, Hamas wants a permanent ceasefire into the war at the very beginning, number one. And number two, perhaps most crucially, you know, you mentioned that third phase, the rebuilding of, of Gaza, this humanitarian conference being held in Jordan. Hamas wants to have a role in the future of Gaza. They want a governing role, they, maybe even militarily, and Israel is basically saying that's a non-starter. So that's what's difficult to really navigate. But even the Arab countries, their patience is wearing thin from Egypt to Qatar to Jordan. I mean, these could be, you know, the end days for Hamas actually, but this is why it's so difficult right now what we're watching. We're still a few steps away. Well, I mean, pardon some of us for sort of plodding along rather slowly, Carl, because, I mean, you, you understand these issues much better than we do, but it seems a bit odd that when President Biden put forward that ceasefire plan, he said it was an Israeli proposal, but so far Israel doesn't seem that keen on it. I mean, why aren't we seeing strong support from the Israeli government? Well, Charles, you're absolutely right. There's a lot of undertow here, a lot of internal pressures. You have the uh, dramatic, uh, almost miraculous rescue operation on Saturday of four hostages being released. You have the resignation of a moderate opposition leader, Benny Gantz, resigning on Sunday. So now you have a government led by Benjamin Netanyahu. His government only hangs in the balance depending on two far-right extremist parties uh, who are very adamant against any ceasefire deal. And with that operation that happened uh, on Saturday, Charles, they're basically saying that, see, it just shows that military pressure yields results. That's how we, we free hostages. That's how we'll get them back. But Charles, since uh, October, only seven have been rescued. Only seven. We still have 120 unaccounted for. And actually, Charles, maybe half of them may no longer even be alive. So a deal does seem like the most pragmatic thing. Pragmatic thing. So that's standing in the way right there, Charles this obstinance from this extremist ring. Basically, it's been Benjamin Netanyahu who may be running out the clock. I say that because he's supposed to come to Washington. He addresses both houses of Congress. The end of July, Knesset goes into parliamentary recess. And before you know it, you're into August. You know what's going on, Charles? This is also an international uh, situation because really, uh, he, he's keeping an eye on the November elections. He feels that he'll get a much, much more sympathetic uh, support if there's a new occupant of the White House, and that would be Donald Trump. So that's why you've got this foot dragging going on with Israel. But meanwhile, people are really, really, you know, angry because they want to see all the hostages brought back alive. And to get back only seven res by rescue in, in eight months' time, that's not enough to satisfy anyone. They want a deal now. Well, absolutely. And I was going to ask you that, of course, you are on the ground there, um, Carl, we've seen protesters outside Anthony Blinken's hotel calling for a ceasefire and an end to the war. Just gauge for us the public mood in Israel in the wake of this UN Security Council resolution. Is it a fact that more than 60% are now calling for an end to the war? Uh, absolutely, Charles. It's no surprise because, again, so many factors are at play. You know, even before the hostages were rescued, Charles, people felt that the country was going in the wrong direction of the handling of the war. Uh, with Benny Gantz, a centrist leader, he was leading in the polls against Benjamin Netanyahu as being a leader who would be more fit and suitable to be the leader against Benjamin Netanyahu. He had a leader of like 42% to 34%. If an election was held today, Charles, uh, Benny Gantz's party uh, would all have a near majority with other parties uh, without even needing uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's uh, a party. Uh, so really there's anger where they feel that the current government, they are simply doubling down and running out the clock and they'll continue with these campaigns. You mentioned four soldiers killed in Rafa. 
and they're saying we want the hostages all back. But the thing about it is, Charles, is this: um, you know, technically, he doesn't have to hold elections. You know, he'll go to Washington. The summer recess is in July. November elections. Unfortunately, Charles, uh, the ceasefire deal could be prolonged. It depends on the pressure that's put on Hamas by the other Arab countries. For example, there's talk about the U.S. publicly asking uh, Qatar to formally evict Hamas from Qatar, where it's based to other countries. But as long as they're in Qatar, U.S. feels it has more leverage. There's so many moving parts, Charles. But meanwhile, beneath all of this, Charles, you've just got incredible suffering from the Gazan people. It's just really unconscionable, you know, what's happening to the children, half the population, you know, basically near famine. I mean, that's just incredible. So that's where we are right now. Indeed, Carl, and thank you very much indeed. Carl Bostick is a rice special correspondent. He was talking to me there on the line from Tel Aviv.